Do you really need a degree? Do you really need a lot of experience to land a high paying job in Europe, in Canada, in the United States? This video will change your life. A lot of people are beginning to go into some of these careers that are really, really helping them to earn a lot, whether they are in the UK, in Canada, in US, Australia, and you need to know this career pathway. In this video, we are going to discuss this career pathway that is changing the course of how immigrants live in different countries in the world so make sure you like this video to start with and then join us till the end so that you know me my experience it will be so valuable for you when you move to your um you know country of real i mean i landed my first job two weeks after arriving in canada right and then in six months i landed a six-figure job but you know i love hi welcome and welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello and welcome my name is linda Aze. i'm a registered nurse and on this channel i share information on how you can study work and thrive abroad so don't be a stranger in this channel subscribe and hit the bell icon so that anytime i come out with a video you'll be able to see it because i believe you or your family members or your friends will benefit from the information i share on thank this you channel. so much linda for having me on your channel my name is eno eka I am the CEO of ENY Consulting uh, Incorporated here in Canada. We provide uh, technology consulting services. Um, and I'm also the founder of the Business Analysis School. At the Business Analysis School, we provide training and coaching for organizations to train their staff in business analysis and other related courses, as well as training professionals who want to leverage their experience to move into business analysis, um, scrum mastery, product ownership, product management, project management, and the likes. Um, we help professionals leverage their experience to do this. We have coaching programs, certification classes, and we have lots of on-demand classes in business analysis, project management, and scrum. So that's about me. Other things I do are uh, providing consulting, um, speaking, um, teaching, volunteering, and supporting um, immigrants here in Canada. Thank you so much for gracing this channel. I'm really, really excited to have you because this is um, what you do is really, really mind blowing. It's helping a lot of immigrants to like launch into professions that are actually in demand in all these developed countries. Okay, so. From your introduction, I want to know your background, like your educational background, but because people will be wondering, how did you get into this? Is it like mm. that easy? What is your educational background, if you don't mind? Sure, I'm happy to share that. Uh, so my educational background is accounting. So I studied accounting in the university, graduated and started working as an accountant. And of course, the next step was to become a chartered accountant, right? To get my ACCA or my ICANN. However, um, when I was working as an accountant and working within project teams, I found that I wasn't really looking forward to becoming certified or chartered as an accountant. I loved the project teams more and the work that I was doing within projects. And I started looking for ways to channel my career that way. I'm also very passionate about technology. So um, I use my accounting experience to move into business analysis. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, um, did you just move to business analysis when you got to Canada or you started this particular pathway from your home country? Yeah, so I actually started my business analysis career in Nigeria. So like I shared with you, um, you know, I was looking for more in my career. I just didn't want to continue this. Accounting is doing the same thing over and over, doing the books. But I wanted something that would excite me more, more challenges, something that was sort of in tune with where the future of technology was going. And I loved what we're doing with um, the project team. So working as an accountant in that um, company where I was working at, we were in, you know, implementing new technologies as we're growing. So implementing a new accounting system, you know, vendor management system, invoicing, HR system, automating payroll and doing all of those things. I was excited in to be doing all those kinds of projects because they were outside of the typical day-to-day -day things. And I felt like I love that so much. So I started doing some research as to how can I learn more about, you know, projects. Um, the project managers I was working with said, you know, you'd really be a great business analyst, you know, the way you ask questions, you know, how you manage 
um, situations and working with different teams and stakeholders, you should definitely look into it. So I first I took a project management training in Lagos, Nigeria, and then I wanted to learn more about business analysis. And you know, even the instructor said, you know, you'd be a great business analyst just you know because of how quick you're a critical thinker. You're always analyzing things. You should definitely look into it. So I, you know, found a business analysis training, did my training in business analysis, um, and then also when I had to get certified. This was all back in Nigeria. In fact, as I, when I got started in this, people were like, what are you talking about? What is business analysis, right? You know, be an accountant, go and do your ACC and become a chartered accountant. Who is hiring business analysts? I've never heard of that before. We know accountant, doctors, lawyers, engineers. What is business analysts? I'm like, well, it might not be so popular right now, but I feel like I'm on the right path. I, I'm so excited about um, anything business analysis. I found this path and I want to go for it. So I went to actually had to go to Ghana to go write my certification exam. Um, I got that done and I started looking for opportunities. I was able to move into the project team and supporting the project as a business analyst. So I did this before I moved to Canada. And then when I moved to Canada, I'm like, okay, I didn't make a mistake. I am in the right path. Because when I started seeing how much business analysts earn and the kind of work that they do here, you know, how they are respected and how they're in, in demand and they are valued by organizations, I said, you know what, I am in the right path. I'm so glad I made this decision. So I started in Nigeria. And I tell a lot of people who want to also relocate that if you actually want to get into this career, get started from your home con country, get your training, your certifications, get some experience. It will be so valuable for you when you move to your, um, you know, country of relocation. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you so much. I, I have so many people that relocated this year and I said the same thing to them, like that same organization I, I, I mentioned to you before we started this um, interview. Yeah. I recommended so many of my people that migrated to the UK to start doing such things from Nigeria before they get to the UK. So when you got, even though you, you notice that it's high paying and it's something that is really in demand in Canada, was it easy for you to transition to such jobs? Was it easy for you to get a job in? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, I landed my first job two weeks after arriving in Canada, right? And then in six months, I landed a six-figure job. But, you know, along the way, as a new immigrant, you know, I was making a lot of those mistakes. Like, you know, when people are coming here, even though you have, you know, the some certifications and experience, like you're getting your resume done, um, you know, my resume was not the Canadian standard. So I was losing a lot of opportunities there. Um, and then also I had to learn how to do interviews. Um, you know, you would agree with me, Linda, that, you know, interviews are very different from the way it's done back home. The way it's done here, right? It's, you know, it's behavioral, it's storytelling, it's all of that. You know, those soft skills they are trying to get from you. I'm used to doing interviews in Nigeria that, are, you know, will do exams and it's all about testing your mathematical skills and things like that. And I wasn't prepared for the way interviews were done here. Um, so I needed to go back to the drawing board after losing a lot of opportunities, not getting offers. Um, I mean, I was also rejected from opportunities because I was an immigrant that didn't have Canadian experience. So I had to find ways to unlearn the things I, I knew and relearn new things. So finding um, coaching and guidance and mentorship, connecting with people who are already in this career, asking questions, getting my resume redone, learning how interviews work, becoming more prepared for those offers. And then once I was able to do that, I started you know, reducing the number of rejections I was getting and I started landing multiple offers. The first, um, you know, after like about two weeks, I was able to land three different offers and I chose one. And within a short period of time, I was still upskilling, learning new things. So whatever I see was um, you know, in demand, I would take on that skill, I'll take on that training, I'll learn, I'll get the certification. And then in six months, I was able to land a six-figure job. Wow. So just to um, ask again, the, the, the job you got after two weeks, was it in line with this business analyst role as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, it was a business analyst role you landed in yeah. two weeks? Wow, yeah. that's, very, that's very, very new. And I think 
you know, sometimes people just move to the UK or Canada or US and they feel like, because people have made such comments on my channel before, like, that all our certificates and degrees back home, they don't count when you move abroad. So when people move, they tend to just go for minor jobs instead of like applying for what they studied, you know? What? So yeah, people make comments like whatever you studied back home is not recognized. You don't need to, like, oh. yeah. So That's I think that true, a very, this your story is really inspiring. Either. Like, yeah. so it means that even if you studied back home, you can still go to like, you can still migrate to the UK and still apply with your own degree and like, your experiences back home. So that is really cool. If you want to become a business analyst, do you need to become an accountant first or what no, are the requirements? <laughs> no, they don't need to be accountants. So that was what me, I went to school to study. That was what I filled on my jam and I got admission, right? And I liked, I liked math anyway. So it just made sense for me at that time. Um, so, you know, just also to go back to something you said about people saying that their degrees are not, re you know, relevant and their experience is not relevant. That's not true. Because even coming here as a permanent resident, I didn't come here to go to school. And I haven't had any reason to say, oh, I want to get some specific Canadian education that would help me to get a job. Your existing skills and experience is important, right? Yes, um, in terms of advancement, it might be more advanced than you, but you know, you, what you already have, you can leverage that to catch up. Um, so do you need to have an accounting degree? No, you don't. Any degree really matters, right? I have colleagues and students that studied English, history, microbiology. We have lawyers, doctors, nurses who have leveraged their experience to move into business analysis. Business analysis is in every um, every industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so for example, in healthcare, which you're in, um, Linda, there's the EMRs, um, there's EPIC, there are all of these things that are being used within healthcare. They are all technologies and you need business ana analysts to help the, the hospitals, for example, to implement them, to upgrade them, to maintain them, right? To work with the different stakeholders. So business and analysts, you don't need to have a specific degree. Any degree matters. Now, with regards to the experience, any experience that you have worked within a company, whether it's customer service, whether it's accounting, sales, where you have delivered value to organizations. So what is business analysis? Is the practice, is a practice of enabling change within organizations, whereby you're delivering value to stakeholders. You're defining the need, and you're creating these changes. So you have to think about the times where you have supported the business to achieve a business goal. How did you do it? Who are the people you worked with? What were the steps you took to achieve it? So anybody who is practicing this is a business analyst, regardless of your job title or your role. So I talk about this all the time. Don't discount your experience. Yes, I worked at, you know, GTB Bank, or I worked at, um, you know, one company, one small five-man company um, somewhere in Nigeria. That doesn't mean it's not relevant. You just need to understand how to leverage that experience, how to showcase it in a way that it will be understood in the UK, in the US, in Canada. Like that was one of the initial challenges I had was I wasn't, you know, using the experience I had to, uh, to apply to those um, roles I wanted in the way that the hiring managers wanted it. I was still using, for example, maybe the same, um, you know, titles or terminologies that we're using back in my former company instead of adapting it to the way it is seen here. So you can use any educational background, any skills, any experience rather, to move into business analysis. If you worked in banking in Nigeria, for example, you can still work in banking here, right? You just need to understand how to translate all the things you have done to meet the standards of you know, Canada or the UK, for example. Hmm. That was really, really good. Thank you for that. You said that whatever degree you have counts. Like if you study computer science, accounting, you can still become a business analyst. Mm -hmm. Correct, right? So how long did it take you? I mean, the the training, how long did it take you? And how long yeah. does it typically take for you to become a business analyst from your background? Yeah. So, um. One thing people have to understand is that, you know, we all have different experiences, right? And some people's, um, some people's experiences will help them to even land a business analysis job faster. But the typical timeline is around three months. If you already have experience, the timeline is around three months. If you don't have any work experience at all, then, you know, that would, you know, take on maybe six to 12 months of being involved in more projects. Because as a business analyst, you're involved in projects. For example, the company says, oh, we want to, 
um, higher. That's a project. The company says, oh, we want to, um, you know, we want to acquire another company. That's a project. The company says, oh, we want to, um, you know, buy Salesforce and use Salesforce as a system in our company. That's a project. It's going to take a while. So if you've been involved in doing things like that, for example, some of the things I did as an accountant that I was able to use to move into business analysis, for example, where one, in the company where I worked at, it was a construction company and we had to, um, we were moving from doing manual accounting on Excel to using an accounting system. So we used the Sage ERP. So we had to implement that new system. You had to automate our invoicing, our proposals, our vendor management, our HR solution so we can actually automate our payroll so all of those things i was involved in all of those different projects and it was interesting because i was doing things that were outside of the day-to-day -day accounting work so you want to think about the things you've done within your own organization where there was a change and it was bringing value to the company that is what business analysts do when they come into a company they look at the existing processes the systems the people okay maybe we need to hire more staff maybe we need to upgrade the current system we're using Maybe we need to see how we can automate our processes so that things are not manual and customers can get um, you know, our services or products faster. So that's what a business analyst does. So you could be doing that without having that title of business analyst, right? Okay. So that's what you need to understand, yeah. Wow, okay. So what are the steps if someone wants to become a business analyst today? What, uh, do you have recommended schools they can attend? Do you know how much of investment, how the cost of attending any of the business analyst schools or like the average cost to become a business analyst? Yeah, so, um, you know, so there are, um, you know, there are lots of um, endorsed education providers. Um, the business analysis school, which I am the founder of, is an IIBA, which is the International Institute of Business Analysis, endorsed education provider, meaning that the education training programs that are provided are endorsed and will give you the professional development hours that you need to become a certified business analyst. So the business analysis school provides certification training. So for certification training, for example, um, it's, um, you know, it varies on like, for example, your experience. So we have a zero to one year of experience. That's entry level certification, right? We have, um, uh, um, they have the capability CCBA certification. That's people with two to three years of work experience. And then we have the professional level, the CBAP level, which is people with five years or more work experience. So between um, zero to five years or more of work experience, you're able to um, find, see where you fit in and then take the right certification. So there are certification exams um, and the certification training with the business analysis school offers. Um, and then also there are coaching programs. So for people who want to transition into business analysis and learn the certification training, um, learn the practical skills, the techniques that BAs use, um, the tools that they use, and also get that career coaching for, you know, putting your resume together, helping you to translate the experience you had, um, how to use LinkedIn, interview preparation too as well, how to answer the interview questions, and how to provide, um, you know, that um, support on the job when you get the job as well. We have those coaching programs. And then we have on-demand classes that you can just take um, if you want to learn, um, you know, some um, specific things about business analysis or project management or Scrum, there are on-demand classes that you can take. So it really varies as to the experience that you have. Um, it could be take you from it could be from one month to six months is what I've seen, and of course that would um, that would determine how much you can spend for the IIBA certification, which is, um, you know, something that um, is, um, you know, is, uh, doesn't change a lot. The certification, for example, I believe the exam fee is around $350 and then you pay an application fee of $125 to uh, apply for the exam uh, to get the certification. And then there are other certifications that the IBA provides, which are around $250 to about $450. Uh, there's the Agile certification, there's data certification, there's cybersecurity certification, there's product owner certification. And then the trainings will also determine, uh, depend on your level of experience um, as well. So, um, you know, with that mindset of learning and then, of course, knowing where you stand based on your experience, you'll be able to find the right course um, as certification for yourself. Mm, okay, wow, that's interesting. From everything that you have explained, I think for you to become a business analyst, you need to have a degree. Is that correct? 
well, most companies, um, it, it also depends on your location, right? So most companies would require at least at least a diploma or a degree, right? Okay. So a diploma, like for in Canada, a diploma would work. Not all companies ask for a degree. Um, and I know in the in the US too as well, not all companies ask for degrees anymore. Uh, but in places like in Africa, I don't know about how it is in the UK. Um, in places like Africa, for example, companies are you know very strict on you know having that bachelor's or at least a higher national diploma. Um, here in Canada, even for government jobs, they will all, they will ask for at least for a diploma. So um, you know, so if you, at least you have that GED diploma, you can actually get into a business analysis career. But what I've also found is the experience is what really counts because you will see people have a diploma, but they'll be able to gather lots of experience and they're using that experience to work as business analysts. Mm, okay, wow, that's really good. I mean, your uh, your school looks like it's very comprehensive and it has all these interesting courses, cybersecurity, Scrum, product on and all of that. I have seen like there's a school that provide, you said you provide mentorship and coaching. So... Mm. I believe that from the training, you also helped with the coaching so that they'll be able to get a job as well because I yeah, think that's what people yeah. are interested in. They want, like, if they are going for a particular program, they'll be able to get the hands-on training and then yeah. able to transition into the job market easily. Is that yeah. the same thing for your school, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we provide um, that coaching and mentorship guidance for um, students within the business analysis school who join our coaching programs. Uh, the goal of the coaching programs is you get that closer coaching and we have daily classes so you always have access to um the coaches to guide you um, and support you through your career journey and we you know we have students in you know different parts of the world um not just in canada in the us um the uk um nigeria you know even as far as asia right we basically have had students come to the business from about 90 countries so the business analysis career is a global career so it's not like so if you're watching this and you feel, oh, if you're in only, maybe Linda is in US and is in Canada, so it doesn't apply to me. That's not true. Where you are right now, companies are hiring business analysts, so you can still use that experience that you have to work as a business analyst anywhere you are. Wow, okay, that's good. What's the average pay for a business analyst in 2022? Yeah, so um, at the 2022 statistics haven't uh, dropped yet, so we're waiting for it to drop. Um, at the end of 2021. However, as um, sorry, um, yeah, at the end of 2022, rather. However, as, as at the end of 2021, the average, um, you know, the average earnings of a business analyst um, in the U.S. was 100, about $108,000. And for those who were certified, about $112,000. Um, in Canada, it was an average of $102,000. Um, in the U.K., it was an average of £66,000. Um, so those are, you know, and then in um, in Australia it was about one hundred and forty five thousand dollars. So um, these are easily six figure jobs in these um, countries that at least I know, um, you know, have an annual report in terms of salary. And then also industries that hire business analysts um, and pay them higher salaries: the government, healthcare and pharmaceutical services, banking, finance, insurance, consulting companies. IT technology companies, these are um, industries and energy and utility companies, telecom companies. These are um, industries that pay business analysts really well and hire lots of business analysts. So if you have experience, you know, in banking industry, for example, you can use that to move into business analysis, telecom, healthcare, government, for example. Um, you know, I want to share this example of, you know, someone who moved from Nigeria to Canada and she worked with a bank. In Nigeria, and she was in their she was in the call center, and she became a team lead on the call center. And when she moved, you know, people were saying that you know you've always just been in call center customer service. You know, you should just go to the bank and do the same thing. But she wanted to start a career in business analysis. And when she reached out to me, I told her, well, you know, as the team lead of the call center, you started you know as a team member and become a team lead and managing that team. So there were things you must have done to see how you can improve the systems that they use to answer phone calls, the system they use to also manage customers' accounts. There must be processes in place in the call center to answer queries. And then also, how are you able to also hire and train your people since you were their leader, right? So we're able to outline all of these things she did in that call center. And she used that same call center experience to land a job as a business analyst in a call center. 
in a telecoms company, right? So business analysts work in all industries. So when you're able to, um, um, you know, look at what you've done, you can use that same experience to move from one industry to another and still make six figures. Wow, thank you so much. I mean, this is like a an industry that people should be interested in because it's, it's just um, heartbreaking when you see people that have all the degrees from their countries and then when they get to the UK or US and Canada, they will just stick to any job that they find and they never mm -hmm. ever progress. So I believe that this is an opportunity for anyone if you want to move to any of these countries in 2023, have a concrete plan just like she started the process from back home in Nigeria and then it was easy for her to just transition to the kind of job yeah. that she really, really likes. So yeah. it's the same for everyone. So don't have that mindset that you'll not be able to get a good job when you move to, like so many people, when they make comments in any immigration video, they'll be like, why are you encouraging people to get the mini jobs? But people will have very good jobs in the UK, US, in fact, if you any experience you have counts, any degree you have really counts if you present yourself and you are bold enough to go for what you want to. Yeah. So thank you so much, Eno, for gracing this channel. And I believe that anybody that wants to become a business analyst, you already have a pathway. She's on Instagram as Miss Pragmatic. I'll leave her handle in the description of this video. You can check out her school and her mentorship. Follow her on Instagram and she has a lot of good content educational content that you can so you have an insight of what these business analysts is, what they actually do because you get a lot of knowledge from what she shared and then you decide whether this is for you so what are your your top tips for anyone before we go um top tips for sure is um you know having that mindset right and um, i really want to speak to our people especially coming from africa nigeria we always when we come to this part of the world we start to feel inferior we feel like, oh, you know, I did work in, you know, Amazon or Google. And you see all these people that, you know, are saying, oh, this is what I've done. That experience you have in that company is still valuable, right? I didn't, um, you know, like I shared with you, moving from that um, construction company, it wasn't like a big company, but there was so much I was able to do. And I was able to use all of that experience. So don't ever feel like, oh, my experience is not valid. I also worked with a bank. And the truth is, we do so many things, even with just a title, maybe associate, for example. But that associate is doing so many things. So please, please, please have that mindset that if you provide a value to a company, you know, in your home country, you can do it. Just need to know how to communicate how you can provide value to companies. Listen, companies want to make money, right? They want to save money. They want to grow. So they just want people that can support that vision from their roles and then of course um leverage your skills leverage your experiences your experience counts it is valuable um and then also um find ways to start your learning from back home prepare 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 please don't have that mindset of oh when i get there you know anything i see i'll just start once you get sucked into that you would find it hard to actually start to do your own personal development because all of these unskilled labor jobs there are you know the times and the times are not favorable when it comes to work hours and it's very physically draining. So start preparing from your home country before you even leave. Do the research, take courses, get trainings, get certifications, network with people, find successful people in your own field, connect with them on LinkedIn, ask questions, join webinars, and I wish you success. If you want um, you know, to learn more about business analysis, grow your current business analysis, Google Business Analysis School, go on our website. You can chat with us there. Uh, we have lots of free content, blogs, webinars, YouTube, all of that that you can take advantage of. And I wish you success in your careers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you for your generosity in providing this information and your encouragement. Even your gracing this channel is enough inspiration for anyone that is watching. Even if you didn't listen, at least you see that she's doing well. And she's just... From your handle, I noticed you've been in Canada for just the same time I left Nigeria, like four years, right? So yes, a lot years. can happen in very few years. If you are prepared and you're focused and you know what you really want, you can actually get that anywhere you are in US, Canada, Australia. She mentioned it's everywhere. It's a global job. So thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Enna. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.